I'm working on this John Deere 110 garden tractor. This is part 12 of a multi-part series. In the last video, I cleaned up most of the parts I'm going to use to put this starter generator back together. The bearings are packed with new grease. Now I want to look at the armature. An armature is not just one wire wound around a bunch of times. It's a bunch of different coils, all insulated from each other, but the ends of each coil is connected to the coil next to it. This is the commutator, made up of a series of commutator bars. That's where the coils are connected to each other. This is a generic picture showing how an armature is wired. You're looking at the commutator end of the armature. This is the ring of commutator bars. Each one of these curly lines represents an individual coil in the armature. Each commutator bar is electrically insulated from the other. and each commutator bar is connected to two coils. Looking at the end of each commutator bar, there's two wires connected. You won't be able to follow the wires. You just have to imagine all of those coils wrap around somehow and end up connected back to the commutator bar that's next to the one where it started. Now I want to look for obvious defects. Make sure the wires are not damaged or burnt. Don't want to see any loose wires. The commutator surface should be fairly smooth. That's where the brushes ride. The gap between each commutator bar should be below the commutator bar surface. That has to be a clean electrical separation. Make sure there's no junk in the slots that might short the commutator bars together. Sometimes you can use an ohmmeter to check the resistance of a coil. But these wires are so big, there's no measurable resistance. When I touch the leads together, 0.6 is as low as it goes. And when I put the meter on these bars here, it also goes to 0.6. The point is, you can use an ohmmeter for this test, but you're really only looking for an open circuit or a short. So I'm going to use a battery and a test light. This is a standard 12 volt test light, and I have it connected to a garden tractor battery. Now I'm going to touch each pair of bars that are next to each other. I'll start where these numbers are stamped on the outside. And I'll work my way around until I've tested each pair of bars. And there's the number again, so I've been all the way around. All that shows is that all the commutator bars are connected to at least one coil. Now I want to look for shorts. 
The shaft should be electrically connected to the laminations or the metal core because the laminations are pressed onto the shaft. But all of that should be electrically insulated from the commutator bars. I should be able to touch the shaft and any of these commutator bars and the light should not light up. What that shows is that all the commutator bars and wires are insulated from the frame. That all looks good, but one of the reasons your armature goes bad is an internal short circuit. That happens when the insulation somewhere inside goes bad and one wire is touching another one that it's not supposed to. In some cases, you can find a short circuit by checking for resistance with an ohmmeter, but remember the wire used in this armature is big so there's not enough resistance to see on a meter. I need a way to test just the armature without putting it back into the starter generator. This is an armature tester made a long time ago sold by Snap-on Tools. To better understand how it works I want to talk about what happens to the armature when it's inside the starter generator. Remember the armature has 14 individual coils in it. If you want to generate some electricity, you need to rapidly move a magnet next to your coil and voltage will be created in the coil by the magnetism. Inside the starter generator housing, there's two coils around the outside and they have a big chunk of iron in the middle of them. Those are electromagnets. So when you put battery voltage to either of those coils, it turns on the magnetism. The two coils are not the same. Here's a few that were overheated so the insulation's coming off. This one has really thick wire to draw a lot of current for starting. This one has thin wire with a lot more windings. It would draw less current and is used when charging the battery. These coils fit around an iron core. When the current passes through the coil, the iron core becomes magnetic. So this curved face here is the magnet. On the armature, remember how these wires wrapped around in this oval shape. And look how this magnet is about the right size and shape to fit around this coil area. So now you can imagine this armature turning next to the magnet and each individual coil in this armature is moving into and out of the magnetic field. So each coil is seeing magnetism, then no magnetism, then magnetism again, then no magnetism, on and off multiple times per second as the armature is spinning under the magnet. Each time that magnetic field goes across those coils, an electrical charge is generated. These coils physically overlap each other. The magnet is wide enough to cover multiple coils at a time. The brushes are located 180 degrees from each other. So that effectively groups together about half of the coils at any given time. 
This commutator section is designed so when the electrical charge is generated in the group of coils, the brushes are lined up on this commutator ring to allow the current to flow through the brushes and out to charge the battery. When it rotates some more, and the next group of coils lines up with the magnet, the brushes will be lined up to allow the current to flow from those coils. So now you have to imagine all those electrical charges being added up one after the other to provide the constant flowing DC current to charge the battery. In the starter generator, the spinning armature turns the magnetism on and off to create the electrical charges. This armature tester turns the magnetism on and off a different way. If you connect your electromagnet to AC, that is alternating current, like from your wall socket, the magnet will switch polarity, effectively turning the magnet on and off, 60 times a second. Because the electricity from your wall socket in America runs at 60 cycles per second. This is an electromagnet. You can see the coils of wire wrapped around a stack of laminations, kind of like an old magneto coil. I'll lay this armature in the V block. I have this stamped number at the top because I'm going to rotate it during the test. And I want to know when I've went all the way around one time. When I turn this on, the magnetism is oscillating on and off. So right now, that magnetism is creating voltage in the coils of the armature. But there shouldn't be any current flow, because all of the wires and commutator pads are insulated from each other. If there was any current flow, Caused by shorted coils or commutator pads, this hacksaw blade would vibrate and be attracted to the armature because of the magnetism cycling on and off. With this armature, the hacksaw blade's not being drawn to the armature or vibrating. If the short was affecting just one of the coils, the hacksaw blade would only vibrate on one of those metal areas. That's why I need to rotate the armature to expose each metal area on top. There's my number again. So I've made it all the way around and the hacksaw blade was not vibrating or being attracted anywhere. So that passes that part of the test. So what if it was bad? Here's an old armature I keep around for demonstration. On the outside it looks good. There's some damage on these wires here, but I think that's from me having it in the box with other stuff. I saw sparks coming from it one time when I rotated it on the tester, so I'm not going to rotate it. And this one was bad all the way around, not just on one of the metal bars. So hopefully you can tell from the video that the blade is vibrating and also being magnetically attracted to the armature. That magnetism is being created by current flow, which is not supposed to be happening. And it wouldn't be if all those wires and commutator bars were properly insulated from each other. Just for comparison, look at the good one again. Not vibrating. No magnetic attraction. That looks good so far. That's the first test, and the best known test associated with the armature tester. But it only works for detecting short circuits. It does not detect open circuits, which is what a broken or bad connection is. Now I'm going to use this handpiece to check the current. 
it has two contacts on it there's a screw in the end so you can adjust the spacing to fit your commutator bars I'm gonna touch it on each pair of commutator bars and watch the ammeter to see if it makes any current first I'll probe a few different places I'm looking for the sweet spot where the most current is being produced it looks like it's on my right side the back side from the camera's view and if I rotate it a little bit that sweet spot should still be on my right side that means the coil connected to those two commutator bars is the one being most affected by the magnetism when it's rotated to the next commutator bars the next coil is in that sweet spot and should give a similar reading okay now I know where to probe the commutator at I'm gonna move the numbers back to the top so I can make sure I rotate one full turn and I'm gonna test each coil so that's showing right around 5 amps that first number is a 10 and it's halfway to the first number now I'm looking for each one of those coils to produce about 5 amps I'm not really concerned about what the number is but I want to see about the same amount of current coming from each coil there's my number again so I've checked every coil and it's good just for fun if you look around on this commutator you'll find that the same readings can be found on the opposite side so this magnetic field is producing voltage in two coils on opposite sides of the armature this armature passed every test I could throw at it I'm gonna use it if you're wondering about these other probes on this tester it's an internal test light but the light don't work it used to work I didn't bother fixing it because it's 110 volts so there's 110 volts on those probes you're poking around with I did those tests with the 12 volt battery in the test light because it's safer that way also that switch there says low and high the low setting is used to test smaller armatures but you need an attachment that fits in this V block for the type of armatures I'm testing it stays on high Alright, that's it.